For this reason I say to you, do not worry. Look how many times he's talking about, do not worry. Look how many times he says worry. Martha, Martha, you're worried and bothered about so many things. When they bring you before, do not worry about what you are to say. Verse 22, for this reason I say to you, do not worry. Jesus talks about worry all the time. You know what he never one time says? Except for this. You need to be really worried about that. You know, you need to be worried sick about what someone's going to say about you. He never said that. He talks about worry all the time. And he says, for this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life. People are worried to death about their life. As to what you will eat or for your body, as to what you will put on, for, your, for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. For some people, no, it isn't. It's only about earthly things. That's their whole life. That's what their life is about. It's about what they can buy, it's about where they can go, it's about what they can have, it's about what they can eat, it's about stories about earthly things that they can tell. That's it. It's about their car and what they can drive, the job they have, the money they have. That's what their life is. And Jesus says, life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. And he makes this case. He says, consider the ravens. He said, listen, I'll, I'll prove it to you, Jesus is saying. Consider the ravens. Look at them. For they neither sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than the birds. And then he asks a great question. Which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his lifespan? He said, said, what good does it do you? Who's living longer because you worried more? You know, like, where's the guy that's 150 years old? And the news is people come and they go, what's the secret to the longevity of your life, and they say back, you know what it is, man? I'm worried sick (laughs) every minute of my life. I'm afraid of everything, and I'm afraid of everyone. I go to bed at night, and I can't sleep because I just worry about what's going to happen tomorrow and what somebody said about me today. And when I get up in the morning, and I, I don't sleep all night, and I wake up in the morning, and I can't even get out of bed because I'm scared to death of everything that's going to happen. That's the secret of the product you see before you today. (laughs) You should do it. Jesus comes along. He's like, you haven't even added an hour by worrying. He said, so why are you doing it? And he says in verse 26, if then you cannot do even a very little thing, what little thing? Add one hour to your life. Why do you worry about other, other matters? He's so worried about. He goes on building his case. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you? And he comes to the heart of the matter. You men of little faith. That's what he said to Peter. You have little faith. Why did you doubt me, Peter? You were walking on the water, man. You were looking right at me. Where, where'd you go? What are you looking at over there? You're looking at the wind? You're looking at the waves? You're looking at so many things? You men of little faith? Let me say this to you. I, I want to say it in the right heart. Uh, pe- people don't seem to like hearing it, but it's true. Fear and faith cannot share the same space in your heart. However much you're worried, however much you are afraid, is directly proportional to how much faith you don't have. When we are, I'm talking everything. You're laying on your deathbed, worried. The Bible says Jesus takes away even the sting of death and comes about the saying, thanks be to God who gives us the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. Like whatever we're worried about, we don't believe God has it. We don't believe God sees it. We don't believe God cares about us in that matter. So we take it for ourselves and we worry ourselves sick. For a minute there, Jesus had Peter on the water and Peter believed it and he walked on the water and Jesus had him. And then he looked at the wind and the waves and must have thought something along the lines of, whoa, I can't do this. And he started to sink because you're right, you can't do it. Whatever you're worried about, you don't believe God has it. Verse 29. And do not seek what you will eat and what you will drink, and do not keep worrying. So many today you have permission from Jesus, just stop it. Stop. Just lay it at his feet and stop it. How exhausting is it? 
How tired are you? How done are you with the pit in your stomach and the thorn in your mind? He said, don't keep it. Let it go. Give it to Jesus. He's asking for it. He's saying, if I clothe the ravens, if I clothe the lilies, I got you. Stop. For all these things, the nations of the world eagerly seek. They wear themselves sick over it. But your father knows that you have need of them. He knows that you have need of these things. What does he tell us to do? You know what you need to do? But seek his kingdom. And these things, all these things, so many things, they'll be added unto you. He's got it. You look at the kingdom. And you look at the king. 